Hello, incoming ninth graders. We are so excited to have you at Glencoe High School, and we are very excited to walk you through what the forecasting process looks like for your ninth grade year. So in this presentation, we're gonna talk about graduation requirements. We're gonna talk about the different diploma types at Glencoe. And we're also gonna talk about what ninth grade is gonna look like and what your options are for the classes that you're going to be able to take. So first things first, let's go over graduation requirements. So if you are graduating Glencoe with a standard diploma, which is kind of the default diploma for everyone, you're going to need 24 credits. So 24 credits overall, this is the breakdown for if you are going to complete a standard diploma at Glencoe. For students who would like to challenge themselves academically, or especially for those who are planning on going to a four year college right after high school, we also have the option of completing a chancellor's diploma. This is a diploma type that is a little more rigorous it requires 26 credits instead of 24 credits. And if you're up for a challenge or are headed to a four-year college, this could be a really good option for you as well. Also, if you do the Chancellor's Diploma, you are eligible if you have a certain GPA for some of these academic honors at the end of your four years. So all of these honors are available to you if you keep those GPA requirements and you complete everything that you need to complete for a Chancellor's Diploma. Okay, so now let's move on to what your ninth grade year is going to look like at Glencoe. So the typical class breakdown is going to include 4.5 core credits. And remember, one credit is one year worth of classes. So your credits are going to break down like one credit of language arts, so one year of language arts, one credit of math, one credit of physics, that's going to be your science class, one credit of social studies, and then half a credit of PE, so one semester of PE. Because you have room for eight credits a year, after you do your 4.5 core credits, you have 3.5 credits left over for electives, and those are things that you get to pick, and we'll talk about some of the options for those in just a little bit. So another thing to note is that at Glencoe, we are on an A day, B day block schedule. What this means is that instead of having all eight of your classes in one day, every day, they're gonna have four classes on A day and four classes on B day. And they're gonna alternate A day and B day. This seems a little confusing at first, but you will pick up on it right away. So here's a sample schedule for what maybe your freshman year could look like. So for instance, your A day could be PE, first period, physics, second period, then advisory. We have advisory in the middle of the day instead of at the very start of the day. Your third period could be your language arts class and your fourth period could be art if you chose that as an elective. Your B day schedule would start maybe with marketing which is another elective. Sixth period could be Algebra One, your math class, then you'll have advisory. Your seventh period could be World Studies, that's gonna be your social studies class. And then you could end the day with theater, which is your other elective. So core classes and electives are gonna be all mixed up together. Um, but remember that it's gonna be every other day that you're taking the classes. Again, it might seem a little confusing right now, but you will get used to it. So at Glencoe, at high school, grades are really going to matter. All of the grades that you earn in all of your classes are going to go onto your transcript. And that transcript is going to keep track of all your grades for all of the years of high school. And they're all gonna add up together to give you your final GPA at the end of your high school career. If you don't pass a class that you need to pass, you're going to need to recover that credit some way. We have to make sure that you get all the credits that you need to graduate. So that might mean going to summer school, it might mean repeating a class the next year, or completing credit recovery instead of having another elective. So passing classes and earning credit 
is how you get to graduation and it's how you get out of high school and onto the next thing that you're doing. So the biggest thing about passing classes is just being in school, turning in the work that you need to turn in and asking for help when you need it. Everybody is capable of passing their classes and we have a lot of supports here at Glencoe to help you get there if you're struggling. But as long as you put the work in, it's going to be much, much easier for you to pass those classes the first time around so that you can be totally on track to graduate and you won't need to recover any credit. All right, now we're gonna hop into kind of forecasting mode. So here are some things that you should think about when you are going into this process. So what are your goals for high school? What do you want to accomplish? Also, what CCPs are you interested in? What sorts of classes do you wanna to take to get you into those career and college pathways? And then what are your goals for after high school? All of these questions are gonna help shape the classes that you get to pick and the choices that you're gonna make around the things you're going to do in high school. So we're gonna talk about now the different core class options that we have for freshmen. So on the screen, you're gonna see a bunch of different options and I'm gonna go through every core area and talk about what the options are. But you can see here that there are some different things you can do based on what you would like to achieve. And you've got some choices even for your core classes. So the first one we're gonna talk about is language arts. So you can either choose English language arts, this is the standard option for incoming ninth graders, or if you are part of the dual language program, you can participate in Spanish language arts. The next thing we're going to talk about is your social studies credit. World studies is the standard ninth grade social studies class. But if you are ready to take on a challenge right away, you feel really strong academically, especially in social studies, you could take on AP Human Geography or AP HUG as we like to call it. So AP HUG is an advanced placement class. So that means it's a college level class. The main difference you're gonna see between an AP class and a standard class is that an AP class is going to have a lot more outside work for you to do. That means a lot more reading, a lot more homework in general, a lot more projects, and the tests are going to really set you up for the AP exam that happens at the end of the year. The AP exam is a test that you can take and you'll be basically studying for this AP exam all year with the work that you're doing in your AP class. And based on the score that you earn on your AP exam, you could actually earn some college credit with your score, depending on where you go to college and what they want to give you in exchange for the score. So it's a really good way to kind of get some potential college credit on your transcript before you even go to college. So again, it's a lot of hard work, but if you think you're up for the challenge, this could be a really great way to get your feet wet as far as AP classes. The next thing we're gonna talk about is science. So if you are going to be taking Algebra 1 as a ninth grader, which is most students, if you're doing Math 8 as an eighth grader, then choosing Physics 1 is gonna be where you're gonna go. However, if you are already taking Algebra 1 and you're going to be in Geometry as a ninth grader, then you could choose to take the Accelerated Physics class. That's a little more fast paced and it kind of assumes that you know some of the Algebra 1 stuff, some of the math stuff already. So you can go a little faster and you can cover a little bit more. So if you are going to be in Geometry as a ninth grader, Accelerated Physics could be a really good spot for you. Speaking of Algebra 1, we've got some different math options for you as well. So like I said, Algebra 1 is generally where most ninth graders start. If you're part of the dual language program, you can also choose to take dual language Algebra 1. Again, this is only going to be for students in the dual language program. If you are already taking Algebra 1 right now, you will be taking Geometry next year. So check in with your math teacher to see where they think your placement is gonna be 
and you'll use that knowledge to help inform what physics class you're going to take as well. So just check in with your teachers and see where the right spot is going to be for you. Finally, PE. PE is only one semester long, so you could have it either first semester or second semester, and it is a requirement for graduation. We have a bunch of PE electives like team sports, strength training, um, but to get that PE credit, you have to take PE1. So overall, that's 4.5 core credits that you'll be taking as a freshman. Now let's talk about those 3.5 elective credits that you get to take. So when you're thinking about electives, think about what CCPs you're interested in. I'm going to show you a slide in just a second with all of the CCP options for freshmen. And you're also going to think about what support or academic classes am I going to be taking. So think things like AVID, support classes, language classes, all of that. Those will count as electives too. And then what other things are you interested in? Are you, would you like to play team sports? Uh, because we have an elective for that. Maybe you would like to be a TA or an office assistant. Those are some extra other electives that you could potentially forecast for as well. So like I said, there are a lot of CCP options for ninth graders. So you can always zoom back to this slide and help figure out how you wanna get started in your CCP. So on your actual forecasting form, you'll see that you have three full year spots. So basically one line equals one credit, which means one full year of classes. And then you have one semester long spot that you're gonna pair on the other side of the year with PE1. So you'll be able to pick a combination of three full year classes or maybe six semester classes plus an extra semester long class. And on the actual forecasting form, you're gonna be able to see how many credits every elective is worth. If it has a 1.0 next to it on the forecasting form, that means it's a year long. And if it says 0.5, that means it's a semester long. So when you're filling this out, make sure that you put your top choices at the top. Put your favorite classes that you most want in the highest spots. Also, it might not work out that you get every single class that you want to have. Sometimes classes fill up, sometimes classes happen at the same time as other classes and we can't put you in two classes at the same time. So it's really important to put some alternate options into your forecasting form as well. That way, we as your counselors know if we can't give you your top choices, you've got some backups that you're happy to put those in. You'll also notice on the forecasting form, there is a QR code that takes you to an off-campus application. There are some CCPs that have classes that are available to Glencoe students, but that happen at other schools. This could be things like Auto Tech at Hill High, the new Diesel Tech program, it could be Veterinary Science, Fire Science. There are all sorts of classes that are available to you, but they happen at other schools. When you scan that QR code, it will take you to the off-campus application, and you can look through all of the options and forecast for the classes that you would really like to be part of. The thing with these classes is, is that they are very limited because everyone in the district is able to be part of these classes so there aren't a ton of spots so only forecast for these classes if you really 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 would like to be part of them and by the time you turn in your forecasting form please make sure that you have filled out that off-campus application if you don't fill out that application we will not be able to put you in those other classes and remember, because there are limited spots, not everybody who applies is going to make it into these classes. But don't worry if that's you, because you can still apply again next year. Okay, if you are going to compete in any OSAA activity, so that means sports, that means music ensembles, that means anything that is competing for Glencoe, basically, 
you're going to need to be passing five classes. If you're failing any classes, your GPA also has to be at least a 2.0. So if you don't meet these requirements, you will not be able to compete. You'll still be able to practice, just not compete. So make sure if this applies to you, that you are passing all your classes so that you could compete with your teams. Okay, these are gonna be your counselors for your freshman year. If you are an AVID student, then I will be your counselor. I'm so excited to see you there. And if you are not an AVID student and your last name begins with an A through K, you will have Mr. McCain. And if you are not an AVID and you have a last name that starts with L through Z, you're going to have Mr. Dort. We are all super excited to see you next year at Blanco, and we are happy to answer any questions that you have about forecasting. Another really important person to our counseling team is Miss Hernandez. She is amazing and she can help answer any questions for you as far as setting up appointments, learning about how to enroll, figuring out different resources, and just connecting you with the person that you need to be connected with to get your question answered. So absolutely feel free to check in with Ms. Hernandez if you have any questions or are trying to figure out how to get in touch with your counselor. So this year, the 2022-2023 school year, as we go into the 2023-2024 school year, we are going to be coming to classrooms, social studies classrooms, on Friday, April 7th, which is the Friday after spring break. We are going to be collecting forecasting forms the next week on Wednesday, April 12th, and Thursday, April 13th. If you need a forecasting form, there will be some in the counseling center that you can pick up. And if you miss any of these dates, I'm gonna be at Evergreen every Thursday. So you are totally welcome to turn in your forecasting form or pick up a forecasting form from me or from your eighth grade counselor. We want to make sure that you have a signed form before you turn it in. So at the bottom of that form, make sure you get a parent or guardian signature before you turn it in. So we know that you've talked to your family about all the choices that you're making. But okay, I know that was a lot of information, but please feel free to reach out to myself or any of the ninth grade counselors if you have any questions about forecasting. We're so excited to welcome you to Glencoe next year, and we will see you soon.